if you were in the shoes of Mr. Jay Shankar, what would your position have been? Because to paraphrase what he has pretty much said about our position internationally, he said it's not about making other countries happy. It's about us being happy and our interests being taken care of and India as a country being confident that our citizens are safe, our petrol is safe, to put it very crudely, and our interests are safe. <coughs> what would you have done? Look, what would be your nuance? Look, position? India has the same problem, uh, que Russia, which Europe has in a different sense of the word. In 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed and uh, Russia became its successor state and India launched its economic liberalization program, the one thing that we've not really been able to uh, diversify upon is actually our reliance on Russia for our defense needs. And why I say, you know, in a very perverse sense of the word, we in Europe find ourselves in a similar position, is because Europe has not been able to or did not diversify its energy dependence on Russia. And so therefore, I think uh, if uh, India wouldn't have had the kind of defense dependence that it has on Russia, our position on the Ukrainian war would have been very different. So under those circumstances, it is all very good to justify it and say that, you know, our national interest uh, entails that we uh, take a position whereby we are able to protect ourselves. But if you were to extend that position to actually take advantage of a war and actually fill up your oil coffers, then somebody can ask this question that are you not really profiteering from a war? Are you not really profiteering from somebody else's tragedy? Not really, because India has very categorically said that war is not an option. India has again on multiple <laughs> platforms called out that use of violence against civilians is not acceptable. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to pick a corner. You can protect your interests and yet say human rights violations are not okay. Well, uh, that's all very well, but uh, if you are buying 1% of your oil needs in a particular year from a particular country and then you up it by 11% in the next year primarily because you are getting uh, discounted oil and that is because of a situation uh, which is definitely not peaceful by any uh, stretch of imagination then somebody can turn around and say that you're really profiteering from a war. And that's why I took you back to the moral imperative of India's foreign policy, because at that point in time, when we decided to be non-aligned, which Dr. Jay Shankar, you know, very glibly refers to as multi-aligned at that point in time, it was not easy when a world which had just emerged out of the ravages of, a second, of the Second World War and had got divided into uh, two power blocks. And at that point in time, to actually tread the middle path, mm. especially when you did not have the economic or the geopolitical heft to do it, was far, far uh, a tougher act than anything that you've ever done subsequently. But Mr. 